Okay, so I'm making another video for uh, students who are applying for economics and management uh, who are thinking about it this year, maybe just economics or any economics related degree really. So what I wanted to talk about today were uh, some blogs and some kind of news, places you can get your news essentially um, to support your studies alongside, you know, just doing A-level or reading off of the reading list. Um, so, you know, reading the reading list, that's great for, you know, what you're going to include in your personal statement to give you some insight in, you know, what, what you want to study and things like that. But um, universities, in particular Oxford, doesn't really care about the personal statement that much. Um, you may get some questions based off of your personal statement, but that is only in the rare case where you have put something really quite intelligent, quite insightful, then they may want to know more about a particular essay you've written or maybe a uh, concept that you looked at and found interesting so I um, included quite a complex idea uh, from game theory and as a result they asked me about that but apart from that you know you don't really necessarily get a huge amount of questions based on them. Um, econ is very much like quantitative and then it's also based on being able to kind of analyse case studies um, and data uh, you know, from from whatever they give you. So uh, basically what I think is, although the reading list is great and you should 100% read uh, all of the things on there, what I would do more in order to prepare myself to be an all-rounded candidate who would perform well at an interview um, would be to read some of these blogs that I'm going to suggest to you. I'm sure you've heard of quite a few of them, but in case you haven't, I, I will just quickly take you through what I what I mean here. So the first one that I tend to look at is this one here, it's the Free Economics blog. Obviously a lot of you have heard of the Free Economics book, which everybody reads and talks about, and um, yeah, it's a great book and it's got some really interesting ideas. I think what made it so popular was that it took some, you know, it, lo it looks at facts that you don't necessarily, or it looks at things where you don't expect the ideas to, uh, economics to be part of explaining certain phenomenon and things like that. But anyway, so this blog, essentially they have like different podcasts, they look at different questions, they look at different subjects. It's just really interesting, you know, you don't have to read, uh, you don't have to listen to every single one, but um, if there are anything, you know, if there's any subjects that particularly interest you, you know, you could take the time to sit, listen, take some notes, maybe when you're traveling. I think this is a really nice, um, just a really nice kind of like list, like one that doesn't require a huge amount of, um, you know, mental energy, but is really insightful, quite interesting, and just, just nice to listen to, you know. So um, they do update, you know, fairly regularly. So there's really, like, if you go back into the archives, you can see ones that are really relevant to maybe what you've been looking at or reading or what interests you in particular. You know, I wouldn't try and go through and look at all of them. Obviously, it's been going on a long time. But if you can even find one particular podcast where you're like, oh, that's great, then, you know, that's that's something, isn't it? And then that's something that you might be able to link into whatever comes up in your interviews. So that is that one. Um, another, the second one I recommend is uh, NPR Planet Money. Again, a super well-known one, just really well produced, really well thought out, not particularly, you know, long either. So it's not going to be too stressful to listen to. Um, just again, easy listening that covers a wide range of topics that you might not necessarily see in just like an ordinary curriculum. This is the kind of thing that might be super curricular, something that you could bring up in an interview or bring up to um, to people and uh, uh, to, to tutors or whatever. And have your own opinions on these things because the, the things that they look at, look at this for example, should business mandate COVID vaccines for employees? This can just be, it's not something where you have to listen to and say, okay, this is 100% my opinion now, this is exactly what I'm going to think, but it's just a really nice starting point for you to start thinking about what kinds of questions you should be asking when you look at the events going on in the world around you. Um, so yeah, uh, again, the COVID small business boom, boom, this looks really, I haven't actually listened to this one, so I might do, but um, in June, people started over 440,000 new businesses. We speak about their journey. I think that's really interesting that after people lose their jobs, they've turned to small business. This could be a question that comes up at an interview, right? They could say something along the lines of, um, what would you expect uh, the result of a recession to be on levels of uh, new businesses opening up? And of course, you would, might say, during a recession, you would expect demand to fall according to da 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 da. As a result, people would feel less confident, businesses will, consumer confidence will fall, etc., resulting in a smaller number of new businesses opening up as investment falls. 
And then you can say, however, what I saw was actually there was a COVID small business boom. Perhaps the reason for this being, you know, the reduction in red tape and uh, levels of bureaucracy maybe surrounding um, opening up your own business. Um, maybe it's because people are becoming a little bit disillusioned with working with big companies that mandate you to come into the office. Maybe they want to do work from home. Maybe they want to be their own boss. And then th you could do a bit of management analysis, actually, and talk about... Um, you know, the forms of uh, the, the different types of leadership, the different types of company culture, images and stuff. So, so just by that one topic, you can basically use that as a starting point and then use it to talk about things or have a think about things of how you can bring in academic theories from both economics and management. And this is essentially what your interviews would be like because it is, at the end of the day, just a really nice discussion. It should be fun. You should have something to say. If you don't, Unfortunately, you're just not going to have a good time, you know? So yeah, I really recommend this as well. Not just to mindlessly listen to, but actually, you know, take something away from it. Next, one of my favorite, all-time absolute favorite blogs is going to be Greg Mankiw's blog. Um, obviously, Mankiw, he is a professor of economics um, at Harvard, and also his textbook, like Macroeconomics, is like one of the main texts that are used at university in your first year and onwards, actually. So you know this i like his blog because it really is quite a good starting point in how you might approach the subject at university which you know it's a great opener i think that's just it's just it's just fantastic it's so interesting as well you know here let's look at this latest one so we're looking at income effects and labor supply um on average an extra dollar of unearned income in a given period reduces pre-tax labor earnings by about 50 cents decreases total labor taxes by 10 percent and increases consumption by 60 cents in other words people use their extra wealth not only to buy more goods and services but also to buy more leisure as a re result the re introduction of ubi will have a large effect on earnings and tax rates so that's super interesting because not only is ubi a really really relevant topic at the moment something that we're excited about therefore they could ask you about but also you can link this into your A-level learnings, you know, you don't, you know, obviously you don't have to have studied economics to apply for economics, but can you think of things that you could think about here, like maybe a backwards bending labour supply curve, maybe you could talk about a Laffer curve, I think that's just like, a, you know, some things that you could draw upon and then see, okay, so I know the simple version, is there a more an advanced version that I can go and therefore have a look at, you know? So yeah, I absolutely love this one and again it's got really good archive of information so you don't have to of course you should be reading these things regularly but yeah maybe you could go back to like october 2016 and have a look at the things going on here it's just a nice simple easy way to pick up information really um from a, a great perspective you know um okay so the next one is this one so marginal revolution again super super interesting i think i'm just going to keep saying that but you know it's just another perspective isn't it and it just it all of these different blogs the reason i choose to look at all of them and in its variety is because they all kind of have a slightly different voice a slightly different opinion slightly different topics that we're focused on but nonetheless all interesting yeah so um i really liked i mean things like this like the, again you don't have to kind of this is talking about why do we keep books wrapped in Mexican bookstores and kind of maybe suggesting, hey, um, could this be related to, um, you know, different, uh, suggesting different quality. You know, I think it's just quite interesting. It's, again, it doesn't have to be something that you necessarily look at and you're like, oh, that's fantastic. But it's just, it's interesting. Um, the next one is, oh, this is just a paper that I was looking at recently through, where did, which blog did I find this on? I can't remember which i think it might have been i will try and find it but anyway this is a list of um most uh sought after economists according to google trends and i just thought it was quite an interesting paper um you know i asked uh, i think it is you don't have to memorize economists by any means whatsoever but if you don't know some of the main names i think it would suggest perhaps a little bit uh of laziness a little bit so maybe if you took some time to look at the main economists and sort of even this list alone i think is quite good anyway and then you can just look at what do they mainly believe in you know all of these people at hoteling some really interesting stuff that you might go through in second year uh to do with industry of economics and um, some really interesting theories in here arrow kenneth arrow i'm hoping you all know impossibility theorem things like that you know um yeah so i would just i would uh i would really 
suggest perhaps taking a look through this list and seeing if you can recall what the main kind of thoughts were by each of these people just to show you know a bit of a bit of a bit of effort okay so this this blog the worthwhile canadian initiative it is a little bit canada focused because the professors who write it are obviously uh, mo mainly based in canada however again I think it's really interesting because, you know, it, 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 it kind of is, is like things like this, right? Um, here's why it matters, why that matters for macroeconomic policy. It talks about the Phillips curve, right? So Phillips curve, you do learn this at A level, but you also learn this um, kind of a bit more of a complex version at university. So again, I think it is a nice little stepping stone between high school or A level economics towards more, okay, how would I go about analyzing this? at a degree level so I think that it's not too scary because it's not like crazy difficult mathematical stuff but it uh, gives you a nice little nice little intro you know I think it is really important you know to uh, to go through concepts which are beyond the high school curriculum mainly so that when they do give you kind of papers and readings and bring up topics that they want you to discuss perhaps you are not gonna freak out and panic and um, come out with a really kind of like secondary school answer um, and you can't really know what that is unless you've got someone to practice with or if you've got somebody or if you've kind of read this stuff basically okay grasping reality by brad delong again you know highly recommend very interesting stuff some really good pieces of data like you know th this kind of data like you wouldn't you really wouldn't like think to go and like look for this yourself but when it's presented and kind of analyzed for you it really gives you a good starting point on okay what should i be caring about what what you know what conclusions am i looking for really interesting stuff you know especially like this blog in particular has really really like it's easy to follow references and things like that so if you wanted to you know have a bit more of a look at data and um playing around with okay can i quickly look at a piece of uh, an image and understand what it's trying to show me that is also a really fantastic important skill you know um econlib.org so here this is obviously um very euro kind of zone ish but uh yeah there's a there's a lot of good um figures good uh, uh information pieces in here as well really recommend that um I do also read TechCrunch, which is, you know, not, not the most academic, but I put this in here because I want you to remember that, you know, not it's not all about reading stuff which is, you know, gonna gonna be super, super academic. Sometimes you just need information, okay? And TechCrunch has information, all right? It's it's always it's always giving you the best updates when it comes to company stuff, you know. And uh, these days obviously because uh, management is not necessarily business, but management requires you to have knowledge of the business world. So it's always just nice to to make sure that you if somebody was talking about were to talk to you about, you know, um, the latest innovations in X that you have some idea of where it's coming from. Like it would be, it would be similar to if you know somebody were going for medicine and then you didn't really know what CRISPR was. Do you know what I mean? So although it's not like doctors are studying CRISPR and exactly how it works and they have to know how to you know use it in particular, you still have to know it. And that's exact, kind of a similar concept for management, I guess. Like you do have to know the things, even though perhaps that's not like the main field of study. Um, this is just a really fun website, Spurious Correlations. I, the reason I, I just think half the questions they ask you at university are, you know, are these things just correlated or do they cause one another? And I think that this just illustrates it really nicely. I just think it's quite fun. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to have a look at this, I, I do believe that a lot of the interview questions that come up at the University um, of Oxford in particular, they have in the past actually shown figures from here and been like, you know, what What do you think about this? Explain it. So yeah, I just think it's quite fun. Um, just a couple more. So Krugman's blog, obviously. So, you know, again, a really nice, a really nice one, really informative, really a lot to learn. Make sure when you do read stuff like this, if you see kind of words and things that you're not quite used to, like, I don't know, leprechaun um, economics or something like that, you know, you go and have a look at what it actually means. Go and look up these ideas individually. There's zero point to, you know, reading these things if you're not gonna, then going to go and use that as a launch pad to go and look up what what the theories actually are, yeah? I, I mean, apart from that, I would obviously read, you know, a couple of articles from The Economist, but The Economist is just so long, and um, it's just, 
got so much stuff in it, you know, so I don't actually read The Economist super regularly, but I do read The Wall Street Journal and The Financial Times very regularly. Um, the only other two in terms of the um, management in particular I would recommend is the Harvard Business Review. You could get a subscription, I suppose, or you do get three free articles a month if you don't have an account, which I think personally should be enough for you guys. I don't, I don't think, you know, um, I don't, I don't, if you understand a few of them well, I think that's absolutely fine. The other one, apart from Harvard Business Review, is MIT um, Sloan Ma Management Review. They also have an uh, academic journal. I would say the MIT Sloan Management Review and the HBR, they are the main management academic journals that you should be reading to get an insight into what um, what are the main kind of uh, innovations and things and going on and what are the main topics of interest in management at that time. Also a really good intro into what you should be talking about. Um, yeah, so again, I hope that was helpful. Um, remember, I feel like that was a bit overwhelming because I've mentioned quite a few things. You don't have to read all of them. You don't have to even read them every day, but if you could just use them as an intro, if you take one or two things away from the articles, if it just makes you feel a bit more confident that you are capable of you know, consuming that level of information, I think you'll just feel a lot more confident in general. So yeah, um, anyway, that I think is all when it comes to the journals. There are obviously other um, journals which you will look at at university, but I think at a now-ish level, I, I don't think you need more than what I've just kind of mentioned here. That should give you a fantastic platform to begin with, okay?